How many feel his presence here? This Amen. Day? Is it all that's, that's all right. Let's give the Lord a praise. If you feel his presence. Lord, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we take for granted uh, being able to come into a house to worship. I received pictures from this week. Um, the men and women of action took a team and they sent me a picture of, a of what used to be a church was just rubble. And um, I, I think Sister Cindy might have sent me the text. And I think in, in the quotes it said, Sometimes we think we've got it bad. They don't have a house to worship here. Now take for granted that it's just a building and it will be rebuilt. And if by devastation something did happen to this building, we are still the church. And it will rebuild. Amen? My God. I feel this presence here. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. I see new faces. I see visitors. I just want to say thank you for coming to be a part of Calvary Church of God. It's a place for you, amen? amen? And we want you to come. We want you to feel at home. If you're looking for a home church, welcome home. Uh, it's good to have you here with us today. Uh, just in case you was wondering, or just in case you wound up here by mistake, we are a Pentecostal church. We believe in worship. You can't convince me that I'm supposed to be quiet when I start thinking about what Jesus has done for me. Don't put me in no quiet. I don't play good with the quiet game. I always lose. I want to worship. I want to praise Him. I want to thank Him for what He's done for me. Because I know where I used to be. And I know where I was headed. But I took an exit. And it was by the blood of Jesus. I get carried away. i got to get to my message. Who said you can't have a good crowd in the summer? Y'all yeah. look good this morning. Yeah. You do. You look good. I'm not just saying that. I, I, I never just say it, but sometimes y'all might be, he's just saying, I'm not. You really look good. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not. Oh, I just feel his presence here today. Before we get into the word, can we just lift up our hands and just, just thank the Lord for his presence. In your own way, in your own, out of the fruit of your lips, would you just begin to I feel Jesus. Oh, I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. setting up what I'm going to be preaching on this morning. The title of my message is, Well, I'm Disappointed. Now what? Has anybody in here ever been disappointed? Can I get a, can I get a witness? Have you ever been disappointed? Well, what are we doing? Listen, I, I want to encourage you. I, I know it's summer, and I know we, we tend to... to to go in our different directions on Sunday night. I understand. I understand you work. I understand there's a lot going on. But I encourage you to be back tonight. Not just to hear me preach. Not because I want to have good numbers. I really feel like the Lord's giving me a word. It's a two-part message. I'm going to start it today. And I'm going to finish it this evening. But the title of this, this, this part would be, I'm Disappointed. Now what? And tonight I'm going to be preaching on, 
Go a little deeper. Go a little deeper. It's going to be good. If you're not here, you're going to miss it. And we ain't going to sell no tapes either. <laughs> yeah, we might. I'm just kidding. I want you to be here tonight. You know, growing up, I, I promise I'll get to my scripture in just a second. Growing up in the home of ministers all my life. My grandfather was a pastor. A great man of God. He has ruined his race. He is, he is with, the, it's with Jesus now. My dad's a pastor. We've grown up in a, in a pastor's home. Grown up in a minister's home. And people would just assume, well, Trey's going to be a preacher. Well, that wasn't my first intention growing up as a child. Honest to goodness, it wasn't. Growing up as a child, in my early teens, I loved to draw. I still love to draw. I, I, I don't claim to be very good at it, but I enjoy it. Okay? And believe it or not, one of the things I wanted to be when I grew up was an architect. I know some of y'all are like, I can't see you doing that. Well, God didn't either. So, I remember one night at youth camp, I remember a minister laying his hands on me. And I remember the title of the message was, I don't remember the title, but the gist of the message was, God's about to give you a new name. And I remember Gordy Hager. I don't know if you know Gordy. He's a, he's a pastor in the state. My best friend's father. Laid his hands on me. I was standing. I can take you to the spot I was standing in, Brother Robert. He laid his hands on me. And he began to pray for me. And when he began to pray for me, I felt the call of God on my life. I was already saved. And I felt the call of God yearning me to go into the ministry. And I left that day with a new name. Not Trey the architect, but Trey the man of God. Trey the one following whatever God wants him to do. Now in saying all that, in ministry of nine years as youth pastor here, my goal was to be the best that I could be. I wanted to be the best I could be. Not necessarily the biggest. I had opportunities to go to the bigger churches. But I didn't feel like that's what God wanted me to do because I felt like I wanted to be at the best. The biggest isn't always the best. How many know that just because you're big, that doesn't mean you're good? You can be big and unhealthy. I don't mind growing but getting stronger as I grow. Now listen to me. As being raised in a minister's home, as being raised as, as a minister, one thing that I always wanted to do when I felt the call is to stand behind the pulpit and preach. And over a year ago, a year or something ago, this body honored me with that privilege. I say this body, but it was God. But when I stood behind this pulpit, it was an honor to be able to stand behind this pulpit as a pastor. Now, in between that, I've got to stand here and say that through all those years, now listen to me, that it didn't come without disappointments. When I preached the first time from behind this pulpit as senior pastor, it was an honor for me, but I, as much as it was an honor, you, you don't go through life without disappointments. You will face disappointments. And if you have it, baby, you will. I want to talk to you this morning about how what we should do about those disappointments. You know, just going back, when the Lord gave me the opportunity to preach, I failed to mention that He gave me the opportunity to pastor the best church in the world. Amen. You know what? Give yourself. You know, sometimes we feel disappointed. I promise I'm getting there. <laughs> sometimes during disappointments, we feel like people let us down. We feel like people let us down. Can I encourage you that people never let you down because if you want to know the truth, they were never holding you up. <laughs> Circumstances let you down. Not really. We think they do. We, they disappoint us. It gets so bad sometimes to where we think that God has forgotten. 